Open your Bibles to John 6, 56, 69. Uh, yeah, Chad came up to him and was like, um, is this right? You preached some of this last week. He didn't say that. But it was implied, and I heard it. Um, the preacher, except his first job, preached a sermon. The right to one good job he was. Next week, he was back in the sermon. The right to one good job he did. Next week, same sermon. The right to one good job he did. Finally, the other said, We need to get on something else. He said, You know, I'm the first thing I preach, I'm on the next day. So, uh, not that seriously. But, um, it's good to be together, see you, um, we seek to honor our God. He wants us to do so. When a mentor of mine came to Virginia to hold a gospel meeting, and Saturday before we arrived, Saturday before the meeting started, we went door knocking in our community. And we encountered a lady who was very, very interested. In fact, she was doing the World Bible School correspondence courses and starting to think about trying to find the congregation of the church to attend. Connie came that next Sunday, and pretty soon Connie was there every time the doors were open. Coming up and what part of who you were. And Connie went to Tennessee to visit with some friends and family and to see that rural Bible school teacher who lived there in Tennessee. While she was on her trip, Connie sent us a note and said she'd just been baptized in Christ. We were ecstatic in the old moon. And soon Connie was a part of that church. If you needed something, you could call Connie and tell her it could be done. But Connie began to encounter some truths that were hard and difficult. One afternoon, I was in the office. Connie showed up. And she said, Justin, I love this church, but I just can't do it anymore. And here's my church key. She walked out the door and we never saw her. Again. She back did. Think about how many times stories just like that, or quite similar to it, could be told here. Look around. No, go ahead. Look around. Who's not here this morning? Who used to be a vital part of this congregation? Oh, I don't mean that he or she is sick or shut in or none of that. They've left their first love. How many of you might have left Jesus? Spent some years in the wilderness. And come back. Jesus talked to some folks here, told them some hard truths. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life. And the people didn't understand what he was saying. It was hard. They thought in terms of the cannibalism. Not the Lord's Supper. And so the dessert, they leave. And Jesus looked to Peter. Or you all leaving too. You and the eleven others. And Peter gave the bedrock principle that serves as the point of our text this morning. Peter said, Lord, he was asked as if we were fixing to leave. Lord, at whom would go? You have the world to return life. We're going to unpack that. But I want you to notice this truth from those words. Turning 
from Jesus brings death. How can it be anything else? If Jesus has the word of life, if there is nowhere else to go, and you turn back, the only alternative is death. Turning from Jesus brings death. Look at John 6, starting in verse 56. Jesus is speaking. Who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood and binds in me and I in him. As the living Father said, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live all me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like the bread that follows me to die. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue and taught at Capernaum. Uh, we studied these verses last week. We're not going to study them this week. I put them here so we remember the context. What Jesus is saying to these people there in Capernaum, verse 60. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. You can listen to it. But Jesus knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this. Remember anybody else who liked to grumble? Well, that surely to remind the reader of the Israelites in the wilderness. They grumbled against Moses, that original lawgiver. People haven't changed a lick. And here they are grumbling against Jesus, the prophet God raised up by Moses. He said to them, Do you take offense at this? Now, in English, we use that word offense to mean something I just don't like. You say something that kind of rubs me the wrong way, and oh, I'm offended. <laughs> That's not what the Greek term meant at all. The Greek term here meant to sin or to stumble, to fall away. Jesus asked these disciples, I want to sin. Are you going to leave me because you don't understand? Okay. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. They didn't understand Jesus. I don't believe that well understood Jesus. We understand Jesus because we know the whole story. These people didn't. But because they don't understand, because this was a hard saying, because they didn't put they just want me. How stupid thing it is. Here is the source of life. The source of the words of eternal life. And because you don't understand or like everything he says, you're going to walk away. But they are. Jesus said in verse 62, and then why do you want to see the Son of Man ascending to where you are before? Jesus used the much more argument here. Jesus said, okay, bro. You don't understand or like my talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood. Me and the Lord's Supper we took a few minutes ago. If you don't get that, oh, just wait till the Son of Man is resurrected and ascends to the Father. 
That will blow your minds. Wait a minute, verse 62. And then at verse 63. It is spirit. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Not literal. Jesus said, look, I'm not talking about eating my literal flesh and drinking my literal blood. I'm speaking spiritually. Spirit is life. The words I speak are spirit. They're not literal. And life. But, and there are some of you who do not believe. And for Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe who it was who betrayed him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it's granted him my father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no one will walk with him. So Jesus said to twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Lord, we may not understand everything. You know they did not. Lord, we may not like everything you say. You know they didn't. But you have the words life. Not just life, but of eternal life. And Jesus, they, Peter said to Jesus, We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One. We have believed and have come to know. Both of those verbs are the perfect tense in Greek. As I've said before, and may get tired of hearing it say at some point, but perfect refers to something that happened in the past with effects in the present. So what Peter said, we have believed and have come to know you are the Holy One of God. Jesus, we believe that in the past. We came to understand you being the Holy One of God in the past. And we still believe it. We are in a state of faith. We're in a state of knowing. You're there. Jesus, we believe. We know. You're not just anybody. No, 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 no. You're not. You have the word of God. And we know. And we believe. You are the Holy One. Of God. Turning from Jesus brings death. Two groups in this passage. One really didn't like what Jesus had to say. But then it says, it made no sense. Jesus, what are you talking about? Eating your flesh and drinking your blood. So they turn back to know Jesus gave that same opportunity as well. Here's a no no. You, you have the word of God. I love others. You come and leave to all the only 
Peter said, Lord, if we lost, we lose life. Your words, your words give life. And thus it stands to reason if we leave you, if we leave your words, we are leaving life behind. And you know that to be the case. If you leave Jesus, you leave life behind. Jesus said, Luke 9, 62, No one who puts his hand to plow and gives back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Hebrews 10, 38, God the Father speaking, my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. For Peter's words again from God. Second Peter 2.20 If Matthew had escaped, he found the world known for a war and safety. They are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. And Peter went on to say, it would have been better for them never to have known. Never to have known the way of righteousness. Have known it. Turn back. God's scripture points many of those who in Jesus face a world's power of faith. If you believe Jesus, you believe what? That's not what you want. You want what you you know that he has the word of your life. You have come to believe and to know that he is the Holy One of God. So how can you stay? How do you stay faithful, firmly planted in Jesus Christ? I know there are many of you who could teach me a thing or two about faith and still use. This text gives us a path forward to being faithful to this. Number one, hard. Hard. You need to recognize that Jesus said some hard things. Jesus said a lot of things you may not like. Well, you may not understand. You need to accept that fact. You know, Jesus didn't ask my opinion when writing scripture. He asked your opinion before he spoke. And there may be a whole slew of things in there that you just don't know. Maybe that um, loving him more than your family is not difficult. Or maybe you struggle with that whole idea of marriage, divorce, and remarriage. How could you use that thing to find people so strictly? Well, maybe it's doing the others as you want them to do. You just said something to do. Some things that, if you're honest, you might not. There are some things he said that you may not understand. There are few passages where the Lord was speaking, and, and I have to find exactly what he was trying to say. Well, I've read all those commentaries and some of those verses, I still have no idea what he was trying to say. All right. Okay. 
present time to speak. Read the Sermon on the Mount. Read the Sermon on the Mount. See the hard truths of Jesus. Now, the Sermon on the Mount is full of hard truths of Jesus. Why? He talks about anger. He talks about lust. He talks about divorce and remarriage. He talks about oaths. He talks about doing to others and you want them to do unto you and just be nice to people and loving their enemies. And, oh, folks, that's all announced just not full of hard stuff. Read it. And just come to terms with the fact that Jesus says, Mark, you know, the Jews, Jesus' disciples who were hearing him here in John 6, they heard some hard things from God. That's just not for us. We don't want to that. We want things easy. So, how to go. That's not who Jesus was, and that's not who he is. He says it all, all people. Think of the song on that one. Those screws, and I'm making some hard screws and stuff. But think about the ones that are hardest for you. The one you like the least. One to each. You don't understand. Scripture does not promise you or me a better road to this in this life. There's one of the greatest misconceptions when people have to be able to do. This must be easy and fun. He just said, pick up your cross and follow me. That's Doesn't sound like a lot, but I just can't wait to do it. Ready to lay down my life. Literally. And you have to lay down your thing. You see, you can't live how you want. You hear a lot of people talk about live the life you want. Talk about it. Jesus doesn't call you to live the life you want. He calls you to live the life he commands. And there is a big difference. Just understand. It's hard. Two. Here. Even though truths of Jesus are hard, we must hear him. Remember what Peter said? The disciples are going to death because the words of Jesus are hard. He said, You want me to? And Peter said, Lord, where? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. They may be hard. They may be uncomfortable. They may be unpleasant. They may not be what you wish them to be. But they are the words of eternal life. You see, we're not listening to this. We're not talking about all oh, you're going to get up at 7 30 or 8, you're going to have ham or eggs for breakfast or, well, it's not winter, right? We're talking about hell. Yeah. The most important thing about the human 
In Jesus' word is eternal. Even those old ones, maybe especially old even the ones I don't the ones I find difficult, the one where I have trouble submitting, even those words give life. You know why? Because Jesus' words are life. Same passage. We started this morning, John 6, 63. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Words are life. And Jesus wasn't just talking about life in here and now. His words bring eternal life. John 8, 59. Truly, truly, the Lord said, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Keep the word of Jesus, and you will never see death. Think about that. You will never die. I'm not talking about your body, and neither was he. Your body will die and be buried and be food for man. That's just the way it works. But not the spirit. It never dies. Who you are? No, you will never die. You will never die. All no, this house we have right now. Not you. Never Go back and sit on now. Think about those hard truths, whether it's oaths or whether it's love or wars or whatever you like. Think of it in many words. These are words. Maybe from texts that are really hard, you really just don't want to submit. You might do well in life. Words of eternal life. Words that have eternal meaning because they give eternal life. Three, you need to do what Peter did, Peter and the eleven others. You need to hold that Jesus is the Holy One of God. You need to believe and to know to hold that he is the Holy One of God. All that truth. John 6, 69. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Hold that firmly. Why would I say that? Think of it this way. What gives Jesus the right to say some hard truths? A lot of What gives Jesus the right to expect me to lay down my life for him? To give up my dreams, my aspirations, my way of doing things, the way I want to live my life. And it's the way he is. He's the whole world of God. That's what gives him the right. The whole moment. You need to hold that food so firmly. You get that faith from Scripture. Specifically, you get that faith from the Gospels. It's what John said in the end of his Gospel. John said in John 20, 
30 and 31. And now Jesus did many other signs, by the of the sign, which are not written in this book. But these are written. John, why did you write your gospel? These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. You want to know or that Jesus Christ, Holy One, read the Gospels. See Jesus in action. Hear his parables. Yes, hear that heart question. See his miracles. See the deaf hear, the lame walk, the mute speak, the dead walk out of the grave. See his agony in Golgotha. And see a tomb that's empty. See him ascend the Father. And to know, to know, this is the Holy One of God. You're hearing politicians on both sides of the aisle, major side, that is right in between and left and right. Talk about what America can look like. Well, let me ask that same question, Bill. What if America, the world even, really understood, really understood? The turn to Jesus in his death. What the world look like? You find people who are seeing the future. Knowing the gospel's forward and backwards and every which side of it. If they could hold that that Jesus is right. When people would turn to Jesus, they would hear him. Or they would know that he had a world to You won't care how hard of what he said. Difficult it was, okay? Or how difficult it was, I mean, it's that kind of thing. They would seek the people. Also, you know that his words have eternal peace. Glory to Jesus. What a purity. What a purity. That turning from Jesus is. Wouldn't you do everything you can tell us both faithfully? Staying and living in your own world. Help us all. Our faithful truth in our hearts. We need to come to God. We begin that walk with Him, not me. Thank you.